Have you ever went over a friend's house to eat and the food just ain't no good? I mean, the macaroni is soggy, the peas are mush, and the chicken tastes like wood. You like old school rap? I'm so glad we moved on. Why? You don't like old school rap? I like old school rap. I don't like that old school rap. Oh, man. I don't like, uh... Original rap. <laughs> Let's call it My original. My name is P from around the way. Listen to what I got to say. It was a it was a good time. <laughs> I could only imagine how fun it was to rap like that and have people go. Ooh, let me keep going. Let me hear your best impression. I grabbed the mic because I got nothing else to grab. I'm at home with my dad. I grabbed the mic. I'm the microphone controller. Everything I do it revolves around the mic. I got grab the mic, then I put it back down. I put it on the mic stand. Then I take it off the mic stand. And then I control the crowd. Then I put it down. And then I wake up the next day and I pick up the mic and I do something else with the mic. I'm the best with the mic. Because when I'm on the crowd, I can't know one better. Look at me counting all this cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. From my point of view, that was fun. I can, the crowd must be like, "You ain't gonna kill nobody." <laughs> I like the, I like the, I like the newer rap. Um, um, you know what this reminds me of? I want to do this. I want to do that. That type of rap mm -hmm. is. That, why do you? Why do they do that with their voice? Lil Wayne is was when I was coming up. Lil Wayne was my favorite rapper. He passed the torch to Young Thug, even though I don't know if he know he, did, he knows he did. But uh, I'm a I'm a fan of both. My name is Sidney Never I. I am a I would just die. I would just die. That sounds lit. Sidney Never I. Bobby B B I. Hey. Sidney Never I. Hey. Lady Sidney Never I. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Hey, low key. Talk. <laughs> speaking of uh, not knowing what rappers say. I remember I was singing Big Booty Hoes Around You. Ooh. And I said, Oh, uh, yes. Doon, do, doon, do, doon, doon, do, doon, do, doon, Big Booty Hoes. And I said, Hop with it. And you said, What? And no. I was like, uh, Big Booty Hoes, hop with it. And then I feel like we both immediately realized we don't know what they say right there. <laughs> I thought you said something else. I said, big booty hoes, hop with it. Because I thought they were like hopping. <laughs> you know, hopping. And then I think... No. What What do you think they say? No, I said, big booty hoes, hop with it. You had said, big booty hoes and something totally different. You didn't even say with well, it. Well... Oh. It was like... You were totally off. Damn it. I don't remember what you said. I don't remember what I said. But, I thought it was hop with it. No, that's what I said. But <laughs> you said something, and then I looked it up, and it's Big Booty Hoes Up With It. Up With It. Yeah. Up With It. Crazy song, by the way. Because these, these guys were also uh, asking the girls for money during the song. <laughs> and, then, and then one of them asked the girls to use their car. I'm gonna look up the lyrics real quick. Big booty hoes. Uh, featuring. Okay, so. Mamas, hop with it. Put your mama. Okay. Let me see you touch the ground. Okay, so. Uh. Oh wait, this is the wrong. It's the wrong song. Open your mouth, and I'm gonna stick my dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, it's it's not called Big Booty Hoes. My bad. It's called Hoochie Mama. Hoochie Mama. You ain't nothing but a Hoochie Mama. Hooray, hooray, Hoochie Mama. Hey. Okay, so yeah, Big Booty Hoes up with it. Hoochie Mamas up with it. Let me see you touch the ground. Yes, I know. So I just want to uh, go up to it. Yeah, keep running your mouth, and I'm gonna stick your your dick in it. <laughs> Uh, Hoochie Hood Rat needs home training, ghetto ass always complaining. Hey, hey, hey. Fuck the actress, you ain't no actress. Lay on the mattress and let a nigga splack it. Splack it. Splack it, splack it. All I want is an e ejaculation, because mm -hmm. I like them ghetto hoochies. No. All I want is an ejaculation, because I like them ghetto hoochies. hoochies. Well, uh, ones who like to pop that coochie. Woo! Miami style, uh, making niggas smile. <laughs> <laughs> That's two live crew, right? This is uh, this is two live crew. Mm -hmm. Hoochie mama. Hoochie mama. Uh, I got a good girl, but I need a whore. I like my <laughs> bitch 
promiscuous. <laughs> Uh, hot in the ass and ready to fuck. <laughs> Foreplay your way, our way, my way. Trick or treat, and I hit it on Friday. Hot in the ass and ready to fuck. Hot in the ass. Ugh. You ain't hot in the ass. Ugh, no. So here's the great. Here's the good part. Come on over for a visit. Let a nigga ride in your Civic. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has to borrow the car. Uh, uh. I, I I love it. I love it. <sighs> But but the bitch ain't shit, so you need to make a switch. Smacking on your lips with your hand on your hips. Trifling slimy, don't try me. Damn, trifling slimy, don't try me. Hey. That's this what is he a did? great this okay. is a great song. And then here's it goes. Uh trying to clown in front of my friends. By the way, bitch, can I get those ends? Hey. <laughs> so he asked for money and he asked the, I, I I love the I love the audace. All right. Um, Wait. We uh we 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 into January. No, I'm I'm sorry I activated the Hoochie Mama, but we got we gotta move on. <laughs> you wanna play the whole song and turn up. No, I was about to play Scarred. Can't be come, can't be come, can't be come, can't be come. Ride, ride. Okay. Okay. We need not let that side. <laughs> Pop out on this show. It's time to be professional. <laughs> All right. You know, we got to, you got to tone it back sometimes. And you know what? That's what my thread today is about. This is one that was mentioned on another show, but we didn't get to it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, black people's amazing translations in a corporate setting mm. of stop fucking playing with me and you <laughs> I, guys know you we, we we switch it up we got our own ways and emails of saying it we got our own ways verbally of saying it but this thread is about basically how do you say stop fucking playing with me but make it professional i really wanted to hear this thread that show oh man so i'm so happy you this is a, yay listen you got your ways mm -hmm. i'll save it for another episode you see, you seen me in action. Persephone, <laughs> don't fucking play with her. You Look, know, I learned. You know the corporate way. I learned it when I had to deal with some bullshit mm -hmm. at my old job. Hey, so um, my what thread is called "Evicting <gasps> My King." It's a bit of a story time. Y'all know mean, I like story time. The fact that evicting and my king were in the same sentence means she's she must feel some type of way and she's in the middle. Oh, man. I love a good story time. Oh, it's gonna be story time. Well, let me get mine out the way. Yes. Because um mine's pretty quick. Stop <laughs> fucking playing with me, but make it professional. Mm-hmm. These are basically super saiyan ways of telling people to not mess with you without getting fired because you know how you know how they be treating black people in corporate setting. Okay. Per our last correspondence oh. on insert date, XYZ was stated. I am happy to provide any additional information and or support if necessary to help clear up any misunderstandings or confusion. Please advise. Please advise is we Attaches uh, red receipts on the email and CCs both of our supervisors. That is everything that you is need. Violent. That was this. This person knows what they're doing. Yeah. This one is. This one is crazy. But crazy good. To achieve clarity, mm. communication must be concise. To achieve clarity. To achieve clarity, Ooh communication must be concise. Courteous and professional. I am eager to resolve this issue with you. However, if you'd prefer, I can step back and blank can speak with you. <laughs> My priority is your comprehension on this matter. Ooh. Very respectfully, David. Ah, that was disrespectful as hell. Someone even quoted that last part. My priority is your comprehension on this matter. <laughs> Oh, that is nasty. <laughs> nasty. Corporate nasty. If I would have read that, I'd have been like, oh, it's war. <laughs> I'd be looking like, who is that? The Kermit the Frog? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, the email petty. Oh my god. It seems we've reached an impasse and your current approach isn't working. Your current approach. Please take the time you need to reassess and we can try this again at a later date. So that's basically you get it together and you hit me up. That was very, very violent. And Some of these are aggressive. Actually something that might get sent to HR. <laughs> that's a doubt that, that with that, you're going to have a meeting after that email. I wouldn't use that one. I don't know. I think you're going to have a meeting after that I like we've reached an impasse and your current approach isn't working. I like that. Yeah. How about this? I'm not sure where the miscommunication began, but I'll gladly clear things up to help you understand. (laughs) Yes. I like it. That's not causing a a meeting. But it's a perfect amount of petty where they would feel what you want them to feel. Mm Mm-hmm. This one I wouldn't use. I strongly advise that you reconsider your approach in this interaction because I'd hate for this matter to escalate. Oh, yeah. That's that that's it's going to escalate because of that message. Right. And it says this sounds like I'll see you in the parking lot. after this shit. Absolutely. Here's a petty one. I've attached leadership to this email chain so we can ensure we communicate effectively with all stakeholders. Kind of snitchy, but. Mm hmm. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, yeah. I apologize for the lack of communication or misunderstanding I might have es- expressed through our last conversation. If need be, I could reiterate what I stated previously for a better understanding. I look forward to your response. Ooh, you can't come at that one because it's like you took accountability. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you get it. You said I can say this again for you in a different tone. Or I matter. can say so what I can... said before, but I stand on it. <laughs> Right. I stand on it. I said what I said, but I'll say it again. <laughs> and then this one is dumb. I wouldn't recommend this. A doctor's appointment may be needed because your ears are clearly not working. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to oh, work. Ooh, I can't <laughs> use that. Look, I'm over here trying to, trying to take, take notes, notes right now. Like, yeah. Some of those were uh, a little bit more aggressive, but I think mm-hmm. that aside from the last one, which was a joke, all of them uh, clearly had their corporate their corporate voice on, mm-hmm. you know, some were a little bit more aggressive than others, mm-hmm. but I mean, it depends on the, the, the corporate setting. Some, some things get away. Some people get away with certain things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. Definitely. Have you I... ever sent a, well, I know you have, but <laughs> can we get something in the style of Persephone? Cause oh we could all learn. God. We could all learn from this. I'm way too straightforward for this to, um, for this to be on my, uh, geez. skill list. I don't know if my best my best is gonna come off the dome because when when I sit and I'm upset is when things really fly. Uh, when I'm just like cool, it don't really hit like that. But I mean, I have sent some recent <laughs> some recent. I think the style that I use is I I like to input information time stuff that's not really date. opinion based. Yeah. Yeah. Time date. I will say per our phone conversation, or um, I will say again, again. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've definitely uh, said. Um, I'm not sure if I'm being clear. I can restructure my communication for better clarity. You got the um, you got the therapist chops, so I think yeah. that uh, you have a lot of experience in using the right words, and a lot of those people didn't know how much they were overstepping. But yeah, I feel like yeah, because some of those I'd a lot of like, subtext oh, in shit. some uh, some words that you mm-hmm. are probably better trained at, um, mm-hmm. and I've seen it firsthand. And unfortunately, uh, you guys, and when I say you guys, I, I mean black women. Mm-hmm. You guys, you guys get um. I mean, in a, especially in a corporate setting, it seems mm-hmm. like people are just waiting to throw the oh, angry black the woman jacket. thing around. Oh, yeah. And I've so seen so many scenarios where it's like anybody else probably mm-hmm. could have and should have flown, flown off the handle mm-hmm. here. But because you guys know that mm-hmm. some bullshit is going to happen, you guys kind of have to take extra L's to the chin and still keep the composure mm-hmm. and fire back in a way that I'll won't get you can, in trouble. I'll say something like, upon reading your email, somebody sent something slick to me. Um, Upon reading your email, I still have a few questions (laughs) that may require more Mm -hmm. attention. Um, 
could you please say that shit again? No. <laughs> It's 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 a it's a it's Could a. Could you please tight watch rope. your tone? It's a very and and retype gray line because um, it's like you got it. You got to figure out a way to get the pettiness and the and the firmness across without you leaving anything that they could grab mm-hmm. onto and and spin out of control. Yeah, man. When I was when I mean people would just pick like the smallest thing. So I really had to like because I had issues with probation officers that were just like doing too much trying to micromanage certain things that they didn't have any con- oh Jesus <laughs> that burp came and punched <laughs> you in the face mid word damn I go back <laughs> can't use that that was horrible why not <laughs> because that's a blooper uh, <laughs> no I've I've had to deal with whether it was um the Department of Mental Health, uh, probation officers, uh, Department of Children and Family Services, and sometimes those different positions just didn't. The communication styles mm-hmm. were way too different, yeah. and you know, probation officers might be used to a more straightforward approach, and Department of Mental Health might be a little slicker, um, and DCFS might just be like, "Look." <laughs> so, and then dealing with supervisors was another thing um, because they supervisors like to place blame on people that sometimes belong to them. And so you have to find the I best didn't do way. It. Who did? Right? It? You it have to find the fault. best way to tell them you fucked up. Right. <laughs> Not me. So it, good it leadership is, is it, at the end of the day everything's your fault. Yeah. And then you and then after the fault hits you, you go and talk to the people whose fault it really was, right. you know. But they you always can tell who who shouldn't be where they are when they start being like, "Oh, something happened. Well, it wasn't me. Who, who, who on my team right. was it?" you know. Who can I write up for this because I didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. Starts at the top. So, that yeah, I enjoy what what about you? Um, not <laughs> You're not good at it. <laughs> You know, that's, you just crack a joke. At me. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I uh, that is why you know we have a we have a lot of business conversations within, you know, internally. Oh yeah. And then I'll say, you know, we'll 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 figure out uh, <laughs> what we want to say, and then uh, you go say it. I, <laughs> you I are definitely your your therapist chops <laughs> are undeniable. You know exactly how to get things across, yes. and I'm kind of from a world where I'll just say it, and then people will ease the situation based on what I said and <laughs> it's uh yeah that's but I I, I keep that I in mind do. if I'm in a partnership because I don't want to speak for anybody else but I, do, I don't I, do uh, I don't like to... beating around the bush but I do know that you know right. I'm a black man in a in a in a corporate setting so I can't be how I would actually talk but we all have our interview <laughs> I do um our corporate I uh, do lingo tell down. you often I'll respond. Mm-hmm. I'll take no, this I on. I, I fully know. I'll, 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 I'll take care of this communication chain, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I think that's it's a nice balance when you do have somebody on the team that can do that. You yeah. can, because you know some people have stronger areas. And <laughs> not to say I'm bad at communication. You're not. You're not. But, you're uh, not with that. But you I are. Think um, that, uh, if there's an issue, it you won't are be a, uh, sugar coated much. You are a lion. <laughs> Thank you. Think. Yeah. I like and that. I have a, a big photo of a lion going like this. Yes. Sometimes I just go up that. to it and I look at it like this. And I'm like, yeah, we here. Yeah, I've seen that side of you and I'm like, huh. Oh, wow. So. For the record, she's never seen me doing this to a, the lion painting. That's not what no, she No, no, no. That's not what <laughs> Like, I've seen that side of you. And I've holy seen shit. that side of you and I'm like, no. Oh. <coughs> I'll take this on for us. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. That was good. I definitely took some mental notes and um, send me that thread because I definitely heard some and stuff take some, that, uh, take that, some, okay. that I can use for, for sure. a certain airline. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, I'm ready for story time. Story time. You got a good one. By Queen. <clears throat> I was looking for love. He was looking for free housing. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> That's the first one. <laughs> For out the gates. We met on Tinder. His name was King. Oh, that's what he meant by my king. Mm -hmm. My first date idea was to meet up for coffee. But King offered to cook for me in my home. First date? Yeah, that's that's sketchy. I ain't ain't coming to my house. Um, He was fine, and I was lonely, so I agreed. King showed up, chocolate bald, fine as hell, and empty-handed. He cooked... The food I had in my fridge. Oh, didn't bring, yeah. didn't, ha- oh, so he was, yeah. he must have been a good chef. All right. We ate French toast and eggs. You didn't bring any food to cook? I asked. King shot back, am I supposed to buy groceries on a first date? This was your idea. Right. Wow. With the audacity. Wow. We had a great conversation and amazing sex. So I guess she just let it go. Well, damn. I think physical attraction led the way for this one. Hey, I mean, hey, shoot your shot, Kings. He said, I can, I mean, if I can cook for you on the first date, get them yams Mm -hmm. for dessert. It worked. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't, don't, don't cut your eyes. It worked. That's on the woman, too. King deactivated his Tinder account in front of me and spent the night. The following morning, King tried to stay in my home while I went to work, but I refused. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, that is such a red flag. When I'm like, all right, I'm about to go. And they're like, bye. And it's my place. A lot of things. A lot of things pop up. Oof. God. (laughs) The next night, King came back to my home uninvited. (gasps) Oh. And we watched Netflix. Oh, she's... King brought liquor, and we had amazing drunk sex. She's to blame. A little bit. I get where this is going, though. Is he a squatter? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to bring a plant next time. Watch. A su- Hobosexual. A succu- we talked about hobosexual. He's going to bring a, a, a succulent. <laughs> <laughs> he spent the night and the next night and the next. Without going back? For two months, f- King remained in my house. Oh, this nigga was f- fresh off a of freeway mm-hmm. overpass. Yeah, underpass shit. Uh, What's the difference? Under? What's an overpass? Under, I would guess over the freeway. Maybe That's where on the, the cars freeway. are? Yeah. The overpass is where the cars are. <laughs> o- underpass is where the homeless people are. I don't know if I've ever heard that just like overpass using that. Reference, makes, it but makes total sense. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> Under the bridge, um, the bridge. <laughs> For two months, King remained in my house. His sex was top tier, and his conversations were amazing. King wanted marriage with me. He wanted a large family with me, and he wanted to support my dreams. But the sum of King's parts didn't equal the whole. Conversations and great sex don't pay my bills. In fact, my bills have doubled. Also, King splurged on himself but bought nothing for me. For example, he had a $350 pair of shoes arrive at my house, but he didn't offer to pay to help me pay the bills. Shut up. <laughs> I he, miss- was homeless, <laughs> he was homeless. Buying what? Gucci's? $350 pair of shoes ain't Gucci's, but it's it's something nice. Gucci's are more? I would think so, yeah. Oh, shit. I wouldn't know. A lot more. At least my Gucci's are. Um, I mentioned to King that I couldn't afford cable and groceries for two, so I may have to let the cable go. Him. Wow. How did you afford it before? Me. I'm buying double the groceries and toiletries now. Him. Cable won't cut you off until you're a few months behind. Oh, Let it ride. The, the fact that he's getting away with this is impressive, but you'd think he'd be like, oh, yeah, let me clean up the house. The the, the double down on the audacity. She's, she's digmatized. Yeah, clearly. Because that's all she keeps going back to mm-hmm. is the sex was amazing. I let him spend the night. The, the sex was dope. All Two all, all it goes back to is is how fire the sex was. There was one day that she refused, and the rest he was he was in there. Right, me or you could pay it this month. Him? Am I your daddy? Am I supposed to pay your bills, or am I something? Or am I supposed to do something else? 
King's quote unquote something else was his amazing sex. Oh, King he really lived, was a hobosexual. Yeah. King lived in a hotel before we dated. So I guess I'm his new hotel. In a moment of clarity, I told him I couldn't afford for him to stay overnight every day. King said casually, You know, once I receive mail here, I'm legally your roommate. Shh. He smiled and my heart sank to the floor. What up, everybody? This episode of Thick Threads is brought to you by HelloFresh. Yes, yes. Eating well is at the top of the mind this month, and Mm -hmm. it's comforting to know you always get top quality with HelloFresh. Ingredients travel from the farm to you in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. Skip the snowy schlep to the grocery store and stock up on snacks, sides, desserts, and more HelloFresh market. Simply add these staples and sweets to your weekly order and they'll arrive at your doorstep along with your meals. Oh, yes. I have been doing HelloFresh for a minute. Yeah? Uh, I, yes, I was introduced to it uh, from through other podcasts. And, man, HelloFresh taught me how to cook. I feel. Yes. I wasn't zesting before this. <laughs> I wasn't making bulgogi anything. Yeah. I, I'm out here making flatbreads now. Flautas. <laughs> I made um, flautas. I've made HelloFresh meals as well, too. Okay. And, and I love, like, I'm a cook myself, mm-hmm. but um, it's really nice to have the ingredients just, like, laid out for it's me and directions. It's like, So you just got to, yeah. and then it make you think you can cook better than you can because mm-hmm. HelloFresh makes it so easy. And um, pretty much every time I've every time I've used it, the, it's come out fire. And then you try to do it without the HelloFresh, and you're like, I needed their organization. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this is harder Absolutely. than I thought. Absolutely. So uh, become like us. Become better chefs this year. It's 2023. <laughs> if you've been post-mating since the pandemic, it's time to get out of it. It's time to get back into the kitchen and learn how to chef it up. So right now, we can help you out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash ThickThreads21. 21, 21. 21, 21. And use the code ThickThreads21. 21, 21. <laughs> for 21 free meals plus free shipping. So if you even had a thought that you were going to become a better cook or or be more of a chef this year, take this opportunity. 21 free meals? That's crazy. Even if you didn't want to cook, you could just try that just to see what happens. Who knows? You might be the next Emerald Lagasse. (laughs) So again, go to HelloFresh.com slash ThickThreads21 and use the code THICKTHREADS21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. You literally have no reason not to do this. Mm-hmm. Find out if you're a chef. Find out if you're the next Guy Fieri. Fieri? Mm. Is it Fieri or Fieri? I thought it was like Fiore. Whoa. Guy Fiore. Be the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> Go to HelloFresh today. America's number one Meal kit. Ooh, America's number one meal kit. Is number one. You know, once I receive mail here, I'm legally your roommate. Shh. He smiled and my heart sank to the floor. I had a mooching stranger in my bed and I was defenseless. So he just threw it all out and was like, it is what it is. I'm squatting. Like, I think it's, what is it, after 30 days or something like that? This is the worst roommate um, black version on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But and I don't I think to... anybody used dick in that version. <laughs> I don't think so either. I think they went straight for the legalities. <clears throat> yep. But once they stayed for a certain amount of time, my place is yours. So he basically just dropped it like, you know when or I get. Or your place is mine. You know when I get mail here, I'm, I'm legally. Mm-hmm. She said, it's my fault. I told too much too soon. King knew I didn't have any strong men in my life to throw him out. I'm an only child. No big, bad uncles or brothers to protect me. No dad to come to my rescue. And as a black woman, I understood that if I called the police, the situation could become deadly for both of us. The only way I could get this man out of my house was to drive him out. I decided to fake my own eviction It took three painful days. I paid my rent. I bought a burner phone. Then I created a fake eviction notice with the burner phone's number on it just in case he called. I slapped the notice on my door. King didn't call the number, but a neighbor did. She said, leave that young lady alone. You should be evicting the people next to me. They got the whole floor smelling like weed. Oh, that's nice of her. I know, right? 
I returned from work and showed King the eviction notice. I asked if he had money to help me out because I was about to be homeless. Him, I thought you were independent. Why are you changing on me? Wow. You lied. Whoa. You don't have your shit together. Oh! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> this is lit fire under you. Huh? This is insane. Yeah. So instead of cuddling with me, King was back on Tinder. We never had sex again. On the third day, I put my cable service on pause and told King it was shut off. I paid the janitor $20 to shut off the electricity to my apartment after I left for work. King texted me, yo, power's off. I responded, oh no, can you pay the bill? He left my message on red. On my way home from work, I braced myself for the grand finale of packing my things and moving out. But when I got home, King was already gone. I texted him, where are you? I need help packing. Where are we going to stay tonight, King? <laughs> Message left on red. If I'm honest, it did sting to realize that King wasn't really into me. And yes, I'm jealous knowing that he's curling someone else's toes right now. But damn, it feels oh, wow. good to have my bed and my castle all to myself once again. Farewell, my dear King. Hey, after watching The Worst Roommate Ever on Netflix, she got out pretty well. It usually ends violent or terribly. Hey, she was smart. She was smart because, I mean, she was willing to pack her shit and leave. Mm -hmm. but, but, but after that, it's like, okay, but you paid the rent. You was going to have to keep that going. What if he didn't right. leave after that? He's like, I'm going right. to ride it until they tell me to go. Well, I think she realized that he was very much a piece of shit. And right. uh, if things got bad for both of them, he, he was out because that's right. all that they were, you know. it. The, the chances of him at that point after what he revealed in his mm -hmm. cards, there was no way that she would, after, after they got past the eviction lie, and the, he wouldn't be rocking with her like, mm -hmm. okay, let's, let's get through this together because he was already full mooch mode. The best sign for her was, that, was when he went back on Tinder mm. because that was like, okay, this is the first step to moving on. Oh, yeah. He's, he's looking for his next victim, Tinder yeah. Swindler. Yeah, I mean, he said, he, she, after all that, she still said, I'm jealous. He's <sighs> curling someone else's toes. Like, Didn't I what was he doing? Didn't I tell you about that hobo dick? If you, if you, if this was all you had. Hobo stick. Oh, he shtick. was probably, he was probably <laughs> putting it down like Thanos. He was probably snapping that mm -hmm. pussy with the, with the infinity stones. <laughs> oh, wait. That's crazy. I've been digmatized before. The, and it is no fun because you know he ain't shit but that pipe. But the 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 Mjolnir, he has a Mjolnir in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> nuts. That's in, like that's truly insane. Uh, uh, I didn't go back. Like once, once I was able to break off that digmatized relationship. Mm -hmm. He tried to date me again, and I was still like, okay. You have to prove to me that this is what you really want. But I cut the sex off. Mm. And I told myself, because I said, that's where the power is. If I let this nigga smash me, it is going back to smithereens uh -oh. <laughs> again. Um, because that's where he would smash me. He would smash me to smithereens. And I wasn't trying to be a smither. Smithereens? <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a smither anymore. I wasn't trying to be so a I smither. So I told him, yes, I told him. I was like, I'm not it's, having sex with you. Like, it's, I'm, I'm done with that. If you really want to be with me, you're going to have to show me something different. Like, because I'm not touching it. I didn't he know tried to get with me for at least a year consistently. I didn't know smither was the root word of smithereens. <laughs> That's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Um, that I mean, that Smithers. story. That story kind of lets you, uh, kind of gives you a refresher on the audacity of some people. Because it's like you have to be such, such a bad person to really see that through. Mm -hmm. And then it's like if you, because at one point he was successful. He's like, I got a mm -hmm. place to stay. The mail went through, but he could have been cool. But he just turns straight up like. The mail's, you know, I got the mail here. I'm legally here. You pay this. I'm not paying this. Red, red, red. Right. Hey. Have you uh, 
Have you ever been catnapped? <laughs> Is that the pussy version of digmatized? I just made that up. Yes. Um. No. Wow. I think that there has been there's been women that had amazing mm-hmm. vagina, but a. I think the homosexual thing is really a a dude thing. Oh yeah. I have had women that I I, I can tell like I'm just like does this person <laughs> does this bitch have a place to stay tonight? <laughs> like if they're a transplant or something like that, I'm just like <laughs> they've been this is this is kind of weird. I mean like you mm-hmm. know it seems like uh I, I I can pick up on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, one time I even called it out and I was <gasps> you know I uh, no yeah what did you say? Uh, I mean, this 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 chick invited me uh, to a bar and made it very very clear, like, oh, we're we're gonna go, you know, to your house and and you know that was like uh-huh. that was made clear in the text. Uh-huh. When I got there, she even said it house. because she was kind of already like you know, and she was already kind of messed up. I'm not really into. I, I don't really do that. Even if they, I know that they're into it. Mm-hmm. That's not a good look. So wait, what? I showed up and they were already drunk. Oh, and she I was already drunk. Okay. Yeah. So, and it was like her her friend's party. They're doing like a bar karaoke oh, and stuff okay. like that. And uh, after a little while, I was just like, All right, I'm a I'm a I'm a dip, you know. <laughs> and uh, this is why I think that she was trying to have a place to stay because <laughs> she kind of freaked out when she realized like, oh snap, like my pussy wasn't enough. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and she was just like, when you told her like, she, yeah, she tried to like do? make out with me. And she was just like, I thought we were. Going to your house tonight, and I was just like, "No, nah, I got, I got stuff to do tomorrow." Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure she probably just smashed somebody else there that night. Damn. Um, but so you think she for sure got a place to stay that night? If that was the, you know, obviously the, uh, the like I said, I, I act on red flags. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's um, what you said about straight cats. You feed them, they won't go away. Hey. So you didn't feed her that. Well, I mean, I have a I have a very comfortable meat pie. place, so I gotta I gotta watch who I let in there because <laughs> it's it's a little too comfortable. And I have had I have you know you know when I feel like I trust somebody enough to a sleep in my house in the first place, but then it's like sometimes there'll be situations where I gotta go, you know, I gotta go to a shoot or something, and I didn't really talk to the person about you know, the my my obligations, uh-huh. and I don't have enough time to sit there and wait for them to get ready. Mm-hmm. So I'll just be like, I got to go. I'll see you later, <laughs> you know. Ooh, and I'll shit. just I'll just be like, you know, I, they're, they're cool. They'll probably take the hint and get their stuff together and dip. But then sometimes, you know, there have been maybe like one to three times that I remember. I'll, I'll come back through, and they're still there, <laughs> and we didn't talk about it, and I'm just like... <laughs> That's it for you. Wow. <laughs> that that like my heart sinks, and this no. has happened like at least three times. I can only I can only uh, visualize two people right now, but it's happened at least three times, and that's never it's never a good. Because <laughs> you a good look. you you because you hold the position of never ever wanting to live with anyone. So yeah, my space is very that. important to me. So my first me. thought is like, you were here the whole day. Like, what were you doing? Like. <laughs> It's just Is anything weird. missing out of your house when you when you uh when you went around and looked. Oh no, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> I'm not leaving anything that I uh That's hilarious. I care about. All right. Well, let's uh those are some cool ass threads. Let's mm-hmm. um let's get into some some facts, some factuals. You got okay. uh you got any you got some good stuff? You got some good stuff for me over there? Uh, I have, um, I do have a fact. Um, It has to do with insulin. Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. You want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. On January 23rd, 1923, Frederick Banting sold the patent for insulin for just $1, saying, Insulin does not belong to me. It belongs to the world. That is a good guy. <sighs> that's 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 a crazy fact. It's not what I thought you were going to say. Um, oh, what did you think I was going to say? Uh, I think there's like a, a, a thing with insulin where uh, people with diabetes are having... It's like a shortage because oh, pe- people without diets. diabetes are mm-hmm. using it to uh, lose weight. Mm-hmm. But um, that's a problem with trying to be a good person because he probably so he probably invented it and was just like this should be for everybody. And right. then the person he sold it to said, "Nah." So right. 
Now it's crazy expensive. His his dream didn't come true. Uh, people are getting over overpriced insulin, and he's not even getting rich from it. You know, so at least his morals are clear. But he could have kept control of it and then made sure it was. Uh, I think he I think he had really good intentions, but he 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 dipped out too early because he could have make, maintained control and made sure that, that he was helping people as opposed to. Uh, leaving it up to humans who are horrible. Mm. So it says the retail price for insulin can be over $140 Mm. for a brand name. However, patients can now pay about $60 for generic insulin, such as Lispro and QuickPan. But my thing is, if the person who has the patent for it sold it for $1, Mm -hmm. why... Like, it's not like they're charging you for it. Like, so it should, I I think there are certain things that should be free for all. And we're kind of getting there. I honestly feel like feminine products Mm -hmm. should be free for all. We can't help (laughs) that, you know, that we have a monthly friend who requires, uh, who requires products for us to keep things in check. You know, you guys don't have to deal with that. So it's something that you don't even have to pay for. So it's like a a natural cost for us that definitely should be comped monthly. And I think we're starting to get there. I did see, I don't know if it was in a different country or a couple of states that already started this year uh, providing free feminine products. I mean, you can you can get free feminine products from certain places like clinics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um but overall, I definitely and there's a shortage. Can you imagine a shortage of feminine that, pro- products? Mm-hmm, there is a shortage. Like Shit. if you go to the shoot, man, I forgot the last couple months, I went to the store and looked at them shelves and I was like they don't even have what I usually what I usually use anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, and so that's really that's really a bummer. Let but me tell you something. <clears throat> imagine a world with no more uh, feminine products. If men with. bled out the dick every month, and we needed that shit, there would never even be an almost shortage. You are so right. We wouldn't even almost get to that level <laughs> at all. I right. guarantee you. Uh, sure. My fact is keeping with the uh, Happy New Year, uh, better, better, New Year, better you okay. theme. Okay. Uh, this is something that I unknowingly did over the years, and uh, I can fully agree with this. Okay. Studies suggest. <laughs> study to death. <laughs> study to death. <laughs> studies suggest that having a steady stream of minor accomplishments. Mm. makes you happier than having a few major ones. You want to know what's crazy? I saw that on social media, and Mm -hmm. I immediately thought of you. Well, I think that uh, it makes a lot of sense because I feel like the the first thing you think about is the people who had a major, major accomplishment, and it's like chasing that feeling, you Mm -hmm. know? And it happens few and far between. It's like the first time people smoke crack. I wouldn't consider that a major accomplishment. No, no, no. I'm but I get the it. Feeling, like you're like chasing, chasing the, the high. first high. But I, the reason I disagree with that metaphor is because like it, it's usually downhill from that. The first high right. is the best, and you right. spend the rest of your life. <laughs> but I feel like but in this scenario, uh-huh. an accomplishment you can always get make a you reach a bigger accomplishment. You know, you can get and motivation again. from it too. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people need that, and it's it sucks because you know as a as a creative, you could have a major accomplishment recently, mm-hmm. and the next week, next month, next day, you can be like, oh shit, did I lose it? Mm-hmm. When's the next one? When's the next one? When's the next one? Mm-hmm. And um, you know that's why it's uh, social media is, is is so dope because social media gives you a chance to create what's in your head and put it out right away Mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, the old school style of, you know, either creating a a TV show or a movie or an album. And you kind of have to disappear for a minute and you have to get it all together and then you drop it and it's either a win or a loss. And you're basically taking less swings throughout your life and which less, less swings means less chances of a major accomplishment, mm-hmm. which means they're going to be way more few and far between unless you bat in 100, which is very, very rare. Right. 
And uh, social media is cool because you can put out three things a day without killing yourself. Mm -hmm. Make, uh, take way media, more swings. Social media as a creative also gives you uh, power as opposed to you know, the people having in, to do the gatekeeper uh -huh, thing. The, yeah. Them having to, well, you need a meeting with this person. If you don't get a meeting with this person, then you're just not going to blow up. But now in the era, the era of social media, do it yourself. You, you can do it yourself. You can build your own. And if the people love you, they love you. If they don't, then you better figure something out yep. or, you know, go the traditional sense of, of working in a job taking care of things until you can figure out when it's your time to do whatever it is you have in your head. Mm -hmm. It's all about timing. Yeah, I, it's it's a, it's a mental thing because it's like, you know, social media can also be a, a farce because you're getting all these wins in your head and you're maybe not really going towards your, your goal. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you have a few viral hits and that mm -hmm. can be addictive too. You can be chasing those, chasing those, chasing those. Yeah. But a lot of people will be like, all right, I... Did this viral uh, video stealing, mm -hmm. like Boom Gang, <laughs> right? And then it's like, oh, people want to see that. Now I have to do that, mm -hmm. and it's not really leading you anywhere. So you're mm -hmm. getting these small wins, but it's not going towards a long term goal. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a. Uh, I think it's, ultimately it's he cool. figured shit out, and he's like, now he's John Gabbana, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to John, John Johnny Gabbana for for, <laughs> for turning it around. But I just, yeah. you know, I, I could see how social media and what what people. What you see working mm -hmm. on your page can lead you, you know, kind of in the wrong direction. So, uh, sure. I, I I think that that fact can be broken down in a bunch of ways. I think it's you know a lot of people have these long term goals that they don't get any fruit from for a long time. But mm -hmm. if you break that long term goal up into little checkpoints, you can still mm -hmm. get that reward. That's what we were talking about with um, uh, your New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of making this huge goal. Increments. Piece it out. Yep. And you get I can tell you, look, way. how many times I didn't, I didn't started so many different businesses and it Man. either it either took off or it didn't. I mean, I did Airbnbs. I had seven Airbnbs at once I remember between that. Los Angeles and Las Vegas. You like know, a little, and I was a little tycoon. Uh huh. I was thinking about expanding to Texas. I was having meetings with people in Texas and and Arizona. I was gonna start a, a but fast did it food fulfill chain. your spirit? Still, um. It was a lot of work, and if I had more money to put up front, it was a it was a hustle that I was forced to kind of dive into because I was transitioning out of my nine to five. Mm. So this uh, the Airbnb business made way more money mm -hmm. than what I in two months with Airbnb I made my year salary as a therapist. Wow! Yeah, so I was like, okay. You know, but I also had more expenses and I wasn't knowledgeable in the real estate, you know, uh, industry. You just saw that check. Yeah. And I was, I was like, OK, this is, I got to keep this going, you know, but it was a lot of I wasn't doing it efficiently. So ultimately I burned out and then COVID hit. <laughs> so it was like burnout was coming. Then COVID hit. Once COVID hit, I lost all reservations because you couldn't, everything literally shut down. So now I have mm -hmm. seven rents with no income coming in. I would be sleeping at each place mm -hmm. every night of the week. Even if you did, you know, and I didn't know about that whole like, hey, you don't have to pay the rent thing coming up. I got oh, out shit. of the business. So I just said I, I was able to pay every rent how I needed it to pay mm -hmm. and move out. I mean, you know, you could have been caught up in them PPP loans now. Uh, Everybody's getting in trouble for all the shit they tried right. to get away with during yeah. the pandemic. So I, I ain't going to lie. I mean, I, oh, <laughs> like, but it wasn't Why? for it wasn't for it. But Steve, mine wasn't I wasn't greedy. I really needed that shit. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I needed it yeah, for. It's legal, it's legal. Yeah. So and then I didn't take more than I needed. You know, I didn't get millions of dollars from the PPP. So. They ain't even worried about me like mm -hmm. that, you know, because I got peanuts to an elephant. Um, but it helped me get out of what I needed to get out of and transition to something else. So, okay, you know, uh, I, but there's I've had in high school, I used to sell water and M&Ms. You know, like every day. You were in, that in the girl. You were the hot Cheetos, hot I, Cheetos, hot Cheetos. I didn't even have to say Kool -Aid anything. Kool-Aid gummy worms, Kool-Aid no, gummy worms. I didn't even have to say anything because... Um, they sold out before school started. Like I freeze bottles okay. of water, 
you know, and then I'd sell each one for a dollar when I got to school. And once I sold out, you know, that's the, at that time it was what like three ninety nine for a, a thirty four <coughs> pack of water, thirty thirty four thirty five thirty five pack of water, and okay. so I made thirty five dollars off of, you know, four dollars every day. It was a nice okay. hustle that I was going from, you know. So I've I've grown up a hustler, even take it as far even. Also in high school, by the time I was a senior, I worked half day so I could get a, a, a part time job and work off campus. So I, as a senior in high school, I didn't even stay the full day at school. I were I went to school half the day and then went off to my job <laughs> mm. for the second half of the day. So it was like the 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 art of hustling is like. That's very Genius. important. It's very important to me. So I've definitely tried and failed, tried and failed, tried and failed. And this is uh, it's still going. There's okay. still trials and fails. Yeah. Um, okay. But So, uh, yeah. Uh, shorten your goals. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, wa- I wanted to say a little, a, a couple of things that might resonate with some people. We don't have to do banter back and forth if you don't want to. I can just read them because I know we're running out of time. Okay. Um, but there's just some things that kind of spoke to me and, um, I saw in our last one, when we did some like mental health check-ins, I saw that some things really resonated with some people, um, even somebody really close to me. So, um, I just wanted to share a couple of things. Take it away. Uh, remember if you're not speaking it, you're storing it and that gets heavy. Nice. Um, Ask yourself, do I miss them or do I miss the idea of the future I expected to have with them? Mm. Um, Sometimes I think that's speaking to toxic relationships um, that we're stuck on and we really need to move forward. Um, Biggest lesson I've learned is to not hold on to relationships or friendships just because of the memories or how long you've known the person. If they don't want to act right, let them go. Okay. Um, I once loved someone so much that I tried to fix them while they were breaking me. Mm. That one, I was just like, oh, my God, because I've definitely been there Mm -hmm. where I'm like, I'm like, I got to help. That's the homosexual story. (laughs) Um, I have learned three lessons this year to leave people where they're at. Accept situations for what they are, and not every action needs a reaction. Facts. So reactions be getting everybody in trouble. Ooh, if everybody child. just knew to just take 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 the info to the face, take the feelings to the face, and just sit on it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people wouldn't be in jail. I'm a work. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. You can see that. You can see. You can see the toxicity in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it, it 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 bleeds out a little bit sometimes. Uh, just just in little flashes, but I can tell that you're uh, you're working on it. <laughs> you know, same with me. You know, I can see. I the the toxicity comes out in flashes, but <laughs> I know where it is, and I know where it needs to be uh, tamed. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's of course. Self awareness is is. Oh, it's yeah. undervalued. If anything, I'm self, I'm, I'm, I'm self aware. You know, <laughs> I will, I will. Uh, I've never had a problem with accountability. Oh, that's nice. unless I genuinely thought I wasn't in the wrong, and that's oh. also toxic. Yeah, but in terms of like, if I could genuinely think could that be. I was, if I was wrong, I would say it overly, you know, and yeah. I would apologize. But I think the toxic part is that sometimes I'm just like when I look at things, I'm like. I'm not wrong. And then it's explained to me, and I'm like, ah, dang, I, mean, I was. That's it. <laughs> right. I just have to be convinced. If you find out, if it was explained to you by somebody else, that something, if you told a story to, like, a friend of yours, something like that, and they told you, like, ah, man, you were wrong in that situation. You're like, but, but. I would, I would, I would, this? I mean, I would. Would you go back to the person and be like, you know what? Yeah. I thought about it. I was wrong. If that was worth okay. it, yeah. If it was something in the past and it was done, I'd be like, ah, dang, I got to work on that. I was wrong in that. But no, if it was something, I think if you got to go back. Current, you got to go. If you realize you're bah wrong, bah humbug. About How no, about that? No, no. There's okay. the toxic that's that's leaking. That out. is because if you if you realize that you were wrong, yes. If you realize that you were wrong about something, later on, 
it is very, very valuable to the other person if you come back and say, hey, you know what? I thought about it. I know it's been a while, but I wanted to apologize yeah. because I was wrong for this. Like I said, I'm a work in progress. Oh, shit. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> But I, if it was something that was currently happening, uh-huh. absolutely. If it was something that I, I explained and it was in the past and it was gone, Mm-mm. you know, it, it depends on what it was, though. It really depends on what it was. If it was something is, that was just like, I know it would mean the world to them, maybe. It's gone for you, but it's not necessarily gone for them. I'm just, I'm, I'm putting it out there. You see how you she tries to, to therapist me sometimes? No, it's true. It's sometimes, even if you think no, it's you gone for you, sometimes... I get it. Like uh, I the said, person will appreciate that no matter how long work it's been. In shit, progress. I gotta apologize for some shit that happened five years ago. Uh, ah. I don't know who got the time. Shit. Well, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> I'm just gonna start saying "well" to do an abrupt stop now. <laughs> I'm gonna try to use like do it like double dutch, but I now know, I'm just gonna be like, "well, you, you know, <laughs> I have to get that off." This is where uh, this is where uh, this bullshit ends. <laughs> Once it gets a little too much, like uh oh, she's trying to she's trying to teach me something. I'm teaching. Listen, eject. Uh, but um, no, I, I I thought that was cool. I like the little mental health check ins at the end. Grassy. Yes. I'm glad that people are um, accepting them. Like I'm glad it. people are reaching out and saying that they're you know they're helping. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, came at the right time. Came at the right time, right place, right time. That's our show. Yeah, and we do it for the Threadheads. But uh, we appreciate you guys for sticking around for another episode. Again, Happy New Year! It's the month of January. Let's just be positive all Absolutely. all month, and then January, uh, February. Let's get toxic again. No, February is the love month. It's yeah. Valentine's Day. Best time to be toxic. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As always, I've been your co-host, Patrick Cloud. And I'm Persephone. We'll see you next time. Bye.